Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Monday, December 14th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, a new poll shows that Americans are more concerned with terrorists than the struggling economy. Then, how climate shysters plan to get your money. After that, a gun advocate responds to a controversial demonstration and may the force of the pat down be with you. That's next. It is what I would do if I was space aliens here masquerading as humans if I wanted to kill humanity. I mean, that, that's it. The, I'm not saying it's space aliens, you know that. I'm, I'm just saying, if I was a robot computer analyzing this, I would say alien intelligence, you know, crime analysis, masquerading as humans on service of Earth, overthrow of civilization, cutting off energy supplies, stifling development enslaving public, dumbing down population, attacking fertility rates, stifling space exploration for operation. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented superfiltration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants and hormones filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons stainless steel construction easy assembly low maintenance replacement filters are simple to install and now as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping this is a limited time offer so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off go to infowarsstore.com or call 888-253-3139 well, we're going to start the news out tonight with a small victory for the GMO labeling crowd. Now, this is one of the biggest food industry opponents to these labeling laws. They are preparing to roll out a non-GMO label. Tropicana Pure Premium Juices will soon be marketed as GMO free. Now, Tropicana's parent company is PepsiCo. PepsiCo has spent $9 million campaigning against state level mandatory labeling laws. They also spent another 11 million lobbying for a federal bill that would preempt any local labeling laws and create a voluntary labeling program for GMO free foods. So we, we reported on this and we knew that this was a big scam. What were they gonna do? So here they're kind of putting this out at like, hey, look at us, we are going to go ahead and let you know, voluntarily we'll let you know which one of our products are GMO free. Meanwhile, Tropicana, oh, Premium orange juice has always claimed to be 100% pure Florida oranges and GMO oranges have not been introduced or approved for commercial production, although they are still kind of working on some. Um, but, but this is sort of a small victory because we see, you know, this labeling crowd has been pushing for this, but really this is a marketing ploy. They want people to say, you know, look how good this company is for what they're doing, but it's also getting consumers to buy a product uh, at a higher price because it's seemingly um, safer and a more ethical product. So my advice is to just go to the non-gmoproject.com. They have some resources there where you can find, you can take an app that you can take with you to the grocery store. You can find out which products have already been verified and you know support those companies that have been pushing for non-GMO products from the get-go. Not these major corporations that are gonna now try to tag along and they're just gonna voluntarily do it so that you think that they are now ethical and the good guys. Meanwhile, they really need to just redo their entire product line. Now, here's another thing that, you know, we've reported on this a lot with autism and, you know, where does it come from? Obviously, scientists, they're just, they just have no idea why there's such a rise in autism. And of course, they're not going to link it to vaccines, but it's interesting because now there's a new study that is linking autism to uh, pregnant women taking antidepressants. Now, the, specifically they talk about Prozac, Paxil, Zoloft, and their generics. These are some of the most commonly prescribed antidepressants. Uh, in, and now US research is suggesting that taking them during pregnancy may increase the chances that your child will have autism. And uh, this, this study's authors say 
that women who took a common class of antidepressants known as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors during the second and third trimesters were more than twice as likely than other women to have children who later developed autism. So they also go on to recommend that women with mild to moderate depression may want to consider non-drug approaches such as therapy or exercise because these things have been shown to alleviate symptoms. And I know for myself personally, um, I went out and got a chihuahua on my doctor's recommendations. He said, that's going to help you with your depression. I got a dog and by golly, that little guy brought me so much joy. And I also changed around my diet um, and just made sure I was incorporating more dark berries, more nuts, things like that, that really go for that omega-3 for the brain uh, and really can help you with your depression. So there are some natural alternatives out there and not these uh, chemicals with these pharmaceuticals that are going to alter not only you physically, mentally, but also your unborn children. Now, shifting gears here, we all know that one of the easiest ways to control the population and have them just conform to your agenda is with fear. And of course, we are in a very important election cycle, this 2016 coming up. So people should be worried about the shrinking middle class, but instead they are now worried about terrorism. Now, Kit, Kurt Nimmo points out that you are more likely to be killed by lightning than a Twitter wielding Daesh. So this is the American Enterprise Institute and they're citing a Gallup poll that declares the top issue facing the US is terrorism. Now, a recent Gallup poll in October said that the top concern was the economy, unemployment, lack of money and taxes. But of course, that's been overtaken by terrorism. Now, of course, that has been taken over by terrorism because all we're seeing uh, CNN, MSNBC, Fox News is the fact that just all this terror, we should be warned, uh, be worried about extremists attacking the country, even though there are no credible threats. So, of course, people are now really concerned with terrorism, even though, you know, you are more likely to be struck by lightning. Now, it, it'll be interesting because tomorrow we're going to be covering the GOP debate live and here. We have someone from American Enterprise Institute saying, let's hope CNN dedicates a meaningful amount of time in the Republican debate in Las Vegas to the issue of terrorism. Voters deserve to hear how candidates plan to defeat Daesh and increase America's national security. So this is what they want people to focus on, this terror that really is probably not gonna be a huge issue for us here in America, especially if we don't allow people in that aren't properly vetted. Right. But, you know, instead they want you to be focused on this like smoke and mirrors rather than asking the real questions or what are these candidates going to do to fix the economy, the shrinking middle class, taxes, loss of money. They don't want you to worry about the real issues. And that happens every election cycle. So they got to put up the big boogeyman so they can distract you with that. Now, here's another uh, article. A lot of people, one of the reasons why they're worried about terrorism reaching the United States is because of the vetting process and particularly they are furious with a secret U.S. policy that banned visa officials from looking at the terrorist wife's social media. So it turns out that Tashfeen Malik, um, she had three separate background checks performed and she passed all of them. She was able to get her uh, fiance visa. But meanwhile, according to uh, FBI officials, she was making these social media posts um, extensively posting to social media that with her talk included jihad and martyrdom. And so, of course, now they're pushing this out because they're saying, you know, look, our hands were tied. We couldn't go into that social media and, and just go in and determine, you know, how to vet these people. And so Homeland Security comes out and says, we want to use Facebook in our visa reviews. Now, we have always reported how Facebook and other sites like this are just going to be these huge surveillance state tools. They're huge um, tools that help collate all of this data on everyone. And one of the big cons um, complaints with the Obama administration has been that they cannot properly vet these refugees coming in. And that is the whole mastering the human domain. They need to be able to master the entire human domain in all of these countries. And of course, Facebook has cast a very wide net and is in every country of the world, pretty much other than, I guess, North Korea and communist China. So now this is um, according to the Wall Street Journal. They're describing this 
this new Homeland Security order as part of a new focus on social media for this department. They've traditionally focused on legal records in the visa application process. And of course, you'll recall that in a speech immediately following this attack, President Obama urged high tech and law enforcement leaders to make it harder for terrorists to use technology to escape from justice. And of course, that is going to be meaning a lot more controls for the rest of us as well, because they hate us for our freedoms, so we need to give them up. And of course, this is why Americans are more afraid of terrorism than they're worried about the economy or something. And I'm wondering if they're gonna also now be having a dip into people's phones and their email and things like that, because now the police there in Norway are raising the alarm because they have found hundreds of refugees caught with images of ISIS flags and severed heads on their phones. Now, these are uh, refugees that are seeking asylum, crossing the border into Norway. And according to this report, they were searching their luggage and their cell phones and they logged hundreds of examples of photos and videos of executions and brutal punishments, such as images of people holding up severed heads or hands. Now they go on to say, oh, you know, those people could have had it on their phones innocently, of course, because I always download videos of severed heads to my phone and, and just hold it there for safekeeping. But of course, this is a huge concern. And I'm sure these uh, technology, um, the technology that Obama is wanting to get into to help stop terrorism is going to now include mobile phones and things like that. Now let's take a look at this because meanwhile, they say that all these people we should be worried about on the no fly list. Well, if they're so dangerous, why are they still being allowed to just walk amongst us? And in fact, here in Paris, they have people who have been on the terror watch list being actively investigated by the FBI still working at the airport or working for the metro station, the bus station and all of this. And now this report is coming out. 70 Paris airport workers have had their security passes revoked over extremism fears. And the radicalization of airport personnel has sparked concern after the crash in October of that Russian uh, jetliner in Egypt. The officials believed that it was brought down by a bomb that was smuggled on board by an airport worker. Now, 85,000 people have these secure zone clearances um, in these two airports around uh, Charles de Gaulle and Orly. So 85,000 people, 70 Paris airport workers had their um, security clearance revoked because of radicalization fears. So these are people that they were concerned, you know, and here they are transporting your luggage because it's the people you never really even think about. It's the janitors. It's the people that are bringing your luggage down when you Oh, you didn't have enough room in the overhead bin and the guy takes your your bag down and puts it under the plane. These are the guys that have the security clearance. And yeah, they have to get these background checks three. In fact, if they want to get into these really um, in, intense zones. But of course, you know, as we can see, those have failed in the past. Now, another big issue here is that one of the people that uh, actually was responsible for blowing himself up there and murdering all those people in the Bataclan rock venue in Paris. He worked as a bus driver, but he was on an intelligence watch list. So this is another huge concern. Yeah, they're not only in the airports, but you know, they're at the bus, the metro, they're the railway employees. And <laughs> you know, this is a huge issue. Meanwhile, people say we should be concerned about this, but on the other side, we have Democrats proposing civil rights for illegals to enter the United States. That's why they, they want to say that it is a civil right to be able to come into the United States. Civil rights are for Americans. They're for people that are here, born here, make it here. And so now this is in response to Donald Trump's proposal to ban Muslims entering the US without being vetted. Senate Democrats are attempting to create a civil right for anyone to immigrate to the US. This is uh, Senator Pat Leahy. He proposed an amendment to Title 18 of the U.S. Code to stop the federal government from banning individuals from entering into the U.S. based on their religion. So, you know, he's, you see it's probably there with good intentions, but as I have mentioned here, there are some reasons to be concerned about bringing these people in without being properly vetted and giving them jobs in, you know, in these industries.